Hello, and welcome to my studio. Today, I'm going to show you how you can do macro photography uh, with just a standard lens. Uh, but you will need uh, a little accessory. Uh, and that accessory uh, is one of these. This is a reversing ring. And basically, it consists of uh, a camera mount on one side, EF mount in this case, to fit a Canon. Uh, but you can get them for uh, every camera make. Uh, and on the other end, uh, you have uh, basically a filter thread. So you size the filter thread to fit whatever lens you're going to use. And then by using this reversing ring um, screwed into the front of the lens, you can then turn the whole lens assembly round and put it on your camera the wrong way around. Uh, why you would want to do that, you may ask? Well, it will give you um, quite incredible uh, magnification ratios, uh, considering that uh, the cost of uh, a reversing ring like this uh, is probably in the region of less than £10. You will, of course, need, uh, like we said before, some step-up rings uh, just to uh, make it fit whichever lens you're going to use. OK, so before we get started in all that, just as a sort of baseline, what I'll do is uh, I'll just set this camera up uh, and set up a flash just so that we can take some pictures uh, of a steel rule to give an idea of uh, the, uh, the magnifications that we can expect. So I'll just pop this on here. And over here. I have a steel ruler just in a small clamp. These clamps, by the way, uh, are available from uh, stationery stores of all places. Uh, they're meant for holding uh, post-it notes and small pieces of paper, etc. Uh, but very handy for macro work. OK, so I've got a steel rule in here. Uh, and what I'm going to do as a, uh, a baseline, as a starting point, is just using this uh, 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 zoom lens, I'm going to set it uh, to its minimum focusing distance. Uh, so let's just set the focusing there. OK. And I'll set it at 70 millimeters to give us some space to play with. Uh, I'll just set that up by eye. I'll move the ruler into view until it becomes in focus. There we go, something like that. OK. So as usual for these sort of things, I have the camera tethered uh, into this machine. Uh, so I'll start up. Uh, Capture One software and just start up the camera mode. Turn the camera on. And it should recognize it, which it has. Uh, I've previously set um, a shutter speed on here to uh, match the uh, studio flash I'm going to use. So it's a flash sync speed, 250th of a second in this, bay, in this case. Um, I'll set an aperture um, mid-range. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this. It's a fairly flat object. Uh, but we'll set it at f8, um, which I think is already set on here anyway. Yes, it is. Uh, and the ISO is set to uh, 100. OK, with all those settings, obviously I'm in a fairly bright studio here. Um, so I'll just do a test. Uh, just to see that uh, none of the uh, lights are affecting, the ambient lights are affecting the, uh, the capture. So if we just do that. And as you can see from there, that is pretty dark. So that's uh, what, we, uh, what we want. So I'll bring the flash in now. We're not doing anything too spectacular with the lighting for this. 
Um, it's more about uh, exactly how you use your reversing ring than how you like mac macro. Um, but it's a good idea, um, if you're using a, a flash gun for this, to have a, a desk lamp or something uh, similar uh, on standby because as you get to very high magnifications, the image in the viewfinder will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Uh, so I'm using this studio flash because it has a uh, modeling light and that I can use uh, to aid uh, when I come to do focusing on the macro. But we're not there yet, so I'll just set all this up, just turn this on. Okay, um, so this is uh, a, a a one kilojoule, 1,000 joule um, studio flash. Um, so I would guess that we're going to need it turned down quite a long way for this. So I'm just uh, guessing at the moment. I've put it on power three and we'll just do a test. Ah, obviously forgot to put the flash sink on. Let's turn, let's put the uh, flash sink on. This is just a little uh, remote which allows me to control all the flashes and also send the sync from the camera to the flash. I'll just test that. Yeah, that's working. So we'll just give that another go. And there we have um, an adequate, uh, for these purposes, uh, picture of uh, the steel rule. And you can see from this that uh, we've gone from uh, zero at this end to about 154, 55 at the other end. Which basically means that something which is 150 uh, odd millimeters wide will fill the frame. And that's as close as you can get uh, with uh, this particular lens without any extension tubes or anything else. So what we'll do now is just move over to the lens that I'm actually going to use, uh, which is actually on this camera, which is a, an old um, Nikon D100. Uh, in fact, this was the first digital camera uh, that I got, um, getting on for 20 years ago now. Uh, and on here I have a 28 to 70 um, zoom lens. The advantage of using an older lens uh, is that it has uh, a manual uh, aperture ring. Obviously when you reverse the lens you're taking all of the control away from the camera. Uh, there is no more autofocus, there's no more aperture control at all. So you do need to have a manual uh, aperture ring in order to be able to stop it down. Okay, so this is the lens that we're going to use. Uh, this is the uh, reversing ring. So I'll just screw this into the front of the lens, like so. Be careful not to cross thread it, which is very easy with these fine threads. There we go. Screw that on there. Excellent. So now I have an EF mount on the wrong end of the lens, if you like. This is the uh, end which is normally on the camera, and this is the, le the end that we're going to use now. So I'll just pop that down there. So I'll just take this lens off the camera. Like that and replace it uh, with this one. This is always uh, a little tricky. There we go. And that goes on there like that. So I'll just set the lens up. Now we've got it attached to the camera. Uh, just make sure that the uh, aperture is fully open uh, and that the uh, Zoom ring is set to 70 millimeter 
and that the focus is set to its minimum focusing distance. So with all that in place, uh, I'll look through the viewfinder uh, and just set this up uh, again. So let's just have a little look and see what we got here. Okay. So I'm just moving this until I can see it in the viewfinder and it's relatively in focus. You do get a little bit of um, distortion doing this, but the center of the image should be quite good. Okay, somewhere around there, I think. Uh, now, in order to check it, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to stop down the lens, uh, but then I won't actually be able to see the image anymore because it's fairly dark as it is right now. So I'm going to use the modeling lamp in the flash here uh, to illuminate the subject so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, and this, if you're just using a normal flash gun, you can do with a desk lamp uh, or something similar. So I'll just turn that on, pop that down there, oops, like that. Okay, that's a bit clearer. Now I'm going to uh, turn the aperture ring down to about f16. This lens actually goes all the way to f32. Um, however, if you use a very, very small aperture, you will end up with uh, diffraction problems which will degrade your image even more. Um, so I'm just going to stick at uh, f16. We'll just check that in here. And with the added light from the modeling lamp, I can actually see more or less what I'm doing. Okay. Right, so obviously the um, exposure may not be correct. In fact, it's almost certainly not going to be correct. Uh, but we'll give it a try uh, and see what happens. Well, it's not bad for a test. Uh, I think you can see from this image that the centre is very sharp and the edges are falling off a little. But there again, um, you are pushing the, um, the, phys the physics of the lens here quite a long way. Um, so it's only to be expected, but it's a very economic way to get into macro. Uh, and you can see from this that um, even at the 70 millimeter end of this, uh, this zoom, uh, I've got it down to, um, that's 35, 36, 37, 38. It's just about one to one. So you're achieving a, a one to one magnification magnification ratio, uh, the sensor in the camera being 36 millimeters uh, by 24 millimeters. This is a full frame camera. Okay, so let's just move the lens around a bit. I'll move it to uh, 50 millimeter. Pop that on there somewhere. Uh, again, I'll just turn the modeling lamp on and open up the aperture all the way. Let's just recompose that. There we go, something like that. there I think. Okay, just shut that back down again. Turn the modeling lamp off. Okay, that's all set. Another go. This may alter the exposure. Uh, yes, it has. We need a bit more power. Uh, so I'm on power three at the moment. Let's 
take that up to power four. There we go, that's a bit better. Uh, and you can see here that uh, now we have um, 24, 25 mil. Uh, so that's giving us about 1.5, magnification ratio of about 1.5, uh, which is uh, pretty good going. If you have any um, 50 millimeter um, old lenses from the days of film, uh, then you can easily use those to do this type of work with. Uh, in fact, vintage lenses are a very good thing to do these with, and they are very cheap. Okay, so let's just carry on with this one. So that was at 50 millimeter. The wider you go, the higher the magnification will be. So I'll turn this all the way around to 28 mil. Uh, and at this, uh, you will definitely need some form of extra light to be able to see what you're doing. Just open up the aperture to full. Just set the position as best I can. Tiny little movements. There we go. Um, shut that back down again. Turn this off. Okay, so we shut it back down to 16. It's all very delicate now. The slightest vibration will cause um, quite a lot of uh, anguish, shall we say. So good idea to make sure everything's steady. There we go. We're going to need a bit more power by the look of that. Uh, so I'll just add another stop. That's one more stop. There we go. Uh, and you can see here that um, we've got, what, 11 mil, just over 11. So you're filling the frame with something which is 11 millimeters across, which is the best part of three to one uh, on a full size uh, sensor, uh, which is not bad uh, for under, uh, under a tenner for a reversing ring. Uh, you do have to live with uh, a few uh, distortions within the image um, but nothing that you can't uh, you can't fix in post basically okay to give you a, a real world look at um, just what you can do with this um, i have uh, a pound coin here so what i'll do is just take this rule out of the position and I'll just set up this pound coin. I'll attempt to get it the right way up. Something like that. Okay. Might not be perfect, but it will be good enough for this exercise. Uh, and I will start uh, with the lens set to uh, about 50 millimeters. Let me just do that properly. Oops, that was the focusing. That's the lens. So we'll set that to about 50 mil. So don't forget, at 50 mil, it's about 1.5. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll start at 70 mil. There we go. Which is about 1 to 1. Okay. So, on with the modelling light. I'll just move this backwards and forwards until I get it in focus. Helps if I open up the aperture. I can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So I'll shut this back down again. Put 
Turn off the modeling light, just check that's on 16. Okay. Um, yeah, this will probably be a little overexposed, but we'll give it a try. Yes, it is. Oh, not that far. I'll take it down by half a stop. And just to give it its best chance, I'll trigger it from here. There we go. And you've got quite a lot of detail in here. If I make this one to one, it's tiny little hairs, etc. Okay. Right. So let's now try it at the 50 millimeter position. You'll find that the quality you get from uh, different lenses will vary uh, depending on um, the position of the, uh, the focus ring uh, and also the position of the, uh, the zoom setting. They are all slightly different. Set that up, something like that. Turn this bit off. Set the aperture. And fire that off. OK. So we can see that that is uh, about 1.5 magnification. Um, you actually are getting, I think, a slightly better result um, at that setting than you got at the previous setting. I mean, the edges are a bit iffy, but the middle is very, very good. OK, let's carry on. Wind this round. 28 mil. Turn on the modeling light. Open up the aperture. See if we can find something interesting on the surface of that coin. I'm actually going to move the coin over slightly so we just get the rim as well. looking for a date stamp, if there is one. Yes, there's one. Uh, just need to alter that ever so slightly. Like that. OK. Turn that off. Wind this round. Okay, yes, you can just make out 2017. It's a bit dark, it probably needs a bit more energy. I'll take it up by a stop. There we are. This is one full stop more power, more energy rather. There we go. And you can just make out where it says 2017. And that is, uh, again, about um, three to one magnification, which I think for, uh, for this outlay, um, using up an old lens, um, is pretty good value. Uh, you can use modern lenses, uh, such, as, uh, such as this one that I took off, but of course, with all the... Um, electronic control disconnected from the camera 
you won't have access to um, the focusing or uh, for setting the uh, aperture. There are ways to set the aperture um, and to do that with the camera turned on and then taking the lens off. Uh, but that really isn't a very good idea um, because the anti-static charge that you've got naturally on the, uh, the sensor will just suck dust from absolutely everywhere if you do that. So not uh, a thing to be recommended at all. Uh, so you are actually better off with old-fashioned lenses. Uh, and some of the um, old-fashioned uh, enlarger lenses, for instance, um, which you can get on eBay for about another £10, um, are very, very good uh, and may even give you a better result than you get with, uh, with this sort of thing. So I hope that's all been of some use to you uh, and um, hope to see you for the next video. Thank you very much.